HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Hopkinton's turf field for today's varsity matchup between the Norwood Mustangs and the Hopkinton Hillers. Today's May 30th, temperature is 67 degrees and cloudy. Norwood and Hopkinton played last Friday. Hopkinton beat Norwood 5-3. to three. Josh Fisher pitched five innings. It started, Cole Glassburn came in in the sixth, and Connor Kelly came in to close things out in the seventh inning. This game has some meaning for both teams. If Hopkinton wins, they clinch the Tri-Valley League large title. It will be the second year in a row for them. Norwood needs this game to stay alive, so this game is meaningful for both clubs. On Monday night, Memorial Day, under the lights here, Hopkinton played Medfield. Hopkinton beat Medfield 5 to nothing. I'll just go over what happened in that game. Cole Glassburn pitched a beauty, probably the best game I've seen pitched in three years. He went all seven innings. Started off in the first inning by giving up a single. He struck out the second batter. Then the next hitter hit the ground ball, the first base. Brendan Kelly took it unassisted, and he caught the uh, next hitter, number four hitter, looking, called strike three. Bottom of the first inning, Ben McKenzie struck out. Catcher dropped the third strike and threw down to first base to retire him. Stevie Simos walked, just stole the bag. Tommy Ambrosino got on in an error from the pitcher who tried to throw the ball to second and threw it into the outfield. And he stole the base. Drew Rancatori struck out and Connor Kelly flew out to center field. In the second inning, midfield went down one, two, three. In Hopkinton's second inning, Breslin hit a ball out in front of the plate. Catcher got it through down to first. Kester went 5-3. And Nick Paharic had a single. Cole Glassburn got on on an error. And then there was a strikeout. Third inning. Glassburn induced a uh, ground ball to second base. He retired that hitter. Fly ball to left field. It was a single and a stolen base. And then it was a fly out to center field. In the third inning for Hopkinton, where they made a little bit of hay, it was a uh, single, another single, and a stolen base. Another single, stole a base, fly out to left field. And the left fielder threw the runner at second out. So that was a double double play turn by Medfield. In the fourth for Medfield, they had a single, a strikeout, fly out to left field. And a catcher to second base caught stealing. Uh, Stevie Simos got the runner trying to swipe a bag. It wasn't very bright. Hopkins in the fourth had a three unassisted. Well, first baseman got the ball and tagged the bag, touched the pillow. Brendan Kelly came up and hit a 400-foot home run to right field. Uh, Connor Kelly struck out. Catcher dropped the ball, and he threw down, down to first base. And Breslin got caught looking on a strikeout. 
fifth inning for midfield. It was four to three, second to first. K, second to first to retire the side in the fifth inning. Fifth inning for Hopkinton. Ryan Kester struck out looking. It was a single by Paharic. Fly out to center field. It was a hit by pitch by Simos. Nothing else is new. Single by Tommy Ambrosino. A single by Drew Rancatori. A single by Connor Kelly. And a strikeout by Brendan Kelly. And there was a line out to second base to end that inning. The sixth inning, there was a ground ball to short. It was retired. A double. Medfield starting to think they had some life. And then there was a line out to Ben McKenzie, who made a tremendous play on the ball. Snow coned it. Heading towards third base. Turned around and threw to second base and caught the runner off the bag for a double play. And the bottom of the top of the seventh inning, there was a fly out to center field. Two Ks to end the game. Five nothing. Hopkinton. We'll have today's Norwood batting order. We got some hard to pronounce names. Rob Ladkowski is going to lead off. Jay Ladkowski up second. Jason Dennehy third. Mark Murphy, James Whalen, Sam Tomasello, David Hayes, Matt Malian, Matt Sunkar, and the DH today is James Whalen. On the mound today is Brendan Kelly, caught by Stevie Simos, Ryan Kester at third base, Ben McKenzie at second base, Cole Glassburn, Monday's hero, at second, Alex Barker Hook at first base, Drew Rancatori in left, Tommy Ambrosoni in center, and Connor Kelly in right field. Brendan Kelly finishing up his warm up tosses. So, again, this game has some meaning. Both teams need a win. Hopkins can still get in and win the TVL by beating Dover Sherburn on Saturday at 5 p.m. If this uh, tape gets up to YouTube in time, which I was told or promised it would. So Kevin Igo is the manager for the Norwood Mustangs. Of course, we have Steve Simos, the head coach for Hopkinton. And this is senior night or day, some festivities after the ball game ends. We got Brendan Kelly heading to Stonehill College to be a Jayhawk. We have Stevie Simos and Ben McKenzie will be Polar Bears at Bowdoin College. We have Ryan Kester who will be a Hokie at Virginia Tech. Robbie Pagliuca will be a UMass Minuteman. And Ty Doherty will be going to Kenyon College, a town that's got a thousand, or the school's got like a thousand acres with 1,500 kids. So each kid gets an acre of land. That's pretty cool, small school. I got my able-bodied uh, cameraman, John Ritz, ready for first pitch. An able-bodied scorer, John Fisher, gives me a hand. Don't have any stats for any of the Norwood players. Unfortunately, they don't update Max Prep's website. It's a strike. Talked to Brendan before the game. He's going to throw a fastball slider and change. There's a fly ball in the right field. Connie Kelly under it. Makes the catch. One down. Rob Ludkowski, nice Irish boys, the Ludkowski kids. Excuse me, Jay Ludkowski. Left-hander. We got a righty and a lefty. 
There's a ground ball. Wow. Quickly, Ledkowski is down 0-1. It's always a bittersweet day on senior day. Last time, the, the ground ball over to second. Glassburn picks it up, throws Ledkowski out. Alex Barker Hook had a stretch for that one. This is the last regular season game we'll be broadcasting on HCAM, which has been supported by our viewers. And Bill's Pizza Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street, downtown Hopkinton. You can visit them at mybillspizza.com. There's a foul ball out of play. Near my car, almost hit the windshield. Jason Dennehy is in the three hole today. Not a particularly big kid. See what kind of pop he's got in his bat. And there's a ground ball up the middle. That's a single. I don't know what gets off the schneid. No chance for either Cole or Ben McKenzie. It's bittersweet for me seeing some of these kids go off to college. Some of them I've known since they've been five years old. Stevie Simos is one of those. There's a ball outside. Ben McKenzie and Brendan Kelly, since they've been 10 years old. And the rest of them throughout their Little League career. It's a foul back. So if Brendan's going to be successful today, he has to stay out of the fat part of the plate. That's where he gets himself in trouble. Works in and out, up and down. He should be okay. Sun starting to poke out. Is a strike. That's his slider. Runner is a little unsure of the count. Stevie Simos is unsure of the count. <laughs> Murphy was heading back to the dugout. The umpire said, no, it's a little too early for that. Runner takes off. No throw down. A little bit of a check swing, but not even close to being a strike. We got one runner in scoring position, two down, top of the first inning. Break a pitch outside. Two on the count. I may be wrong on the count. Who's ever working the scoreboard? That very expensive scoreboard is not doing balls and strikes. There's a foul back. So it'd be great for the Hillers to secure this win, and then the Dover Sherbert game would be just for seeding in the playoffs. You want to be as high as you can. Try and guarantee yourself some home games. Ball four. Third base coach flashing some signs down. The Dennehy. Second base. Mark Murphy just walks with James Whalen steps in. The called strike. I think you could hear that. I like when the umpires are very verbal. You see the Go Seniors in orange with some balloons. We'll get our cameraman to pan over there. There's a fly ball in the center field. Ambrosino coming in on it, makes the grab, retires the side. At the end of one half inning, nothing, nothing. We'll be back on H cam. Bottom of the first inning, Hopkinton 
getting ready to hit. Ben McKenzie leading off. Nothing new there. Stevie Simos hitting second. Nothing new there either. Tommy Ambersoni hitting third. And there's a fly ball in the center field. Right field going to go over and get it. But one out. One pitch, one out. Drew Rancatori hitting fourth. Connor Kelly hitting fifth. Ronnie Sheamus, the DH, there's a little story about that. We'll get to in a minute. Brendan Kelly, Alex Barker Hook, and Cole Glassburn. Ryan Kessler's being DH for today. Just strike call. There's a base hit to the center field. Almost hits the gap. Picked up by Carter. Who's being DH4 today. Always a threat to bunt, Tommy Ambrosoni. And always a threat to steal, Stevie Simos. You got Michael Sunkar at third base. Rob Ledkowski at short. Pitch, ball high. Jason Dennehy is playing second base. Sam Tomasello is at first base. Mark Murphy in left. There's a fly ball down the left field line. That's going to get down. Left fielder is going to get it. Hits his cutoff man, Stevie Simos. Slides in to third and a double for Tommy Ambersoni. So we got Carter in center, Jay Ledkowski in right field. David Hayes on the mound, caught by Matt Mullian. Oh, second and third. One out. Strike called. Drew Rancatori had a tremendous home run. You may have caught on H cam against Dedham. Ball high. Same day, Brendan Kelly hit one out. Or excuse me, Ben McKenzie hit one in the parking lot. Pardon me. There's a fly ball in the left field. Shortstop goes out, makes the catch. No tag by Stevie Simos. Two down. Looked like it got the end of the bat. Catcher and pitcher are going to have a conversation. Connor Kelly, the sophomore, are going to step in. Connor Kelly sitting 306 on the year. Not too shabby for a sophomore. It's going to be some player. It is a curveball. Connor watched that one all the way in. He's got a chance to play two runs here with a base hit. He's got good speed on the bases. Fastball outside. Hayes pitching out of the stretch. Stevie Simon's got a big greedy lead down to third. Swing and a miss. Strike two. No wood not holding Stevie Simos at all. Ball in the dirt or ball in the turf. He'll take off. Foul behind the backstop, out of play. The sun was starting to poke its little head out. Now clouds are rolled in, getting a little cold and felt my first raindrop. Hopefully that won't sour senior day. There's a ground ball. In the right field, that's going to score two runs. Here come Ambersoni to the plate. No play. Two base RBI for Connor Kelly.
Ronnie Sheamus in the Pajoli tournament was playing third base. Bobby McGuire was catching. It was a high pop-up around third base between third and home. Ball high. Sheamus and McGuire sort of met in the middle, and there was a tremendous collision. Sheamus went down, hurt his ankle, stayed in the game. Bobby McGuire got a bloody nose, did not stay in the game. There's the throw down to second base, and he is out. Retired. 2-4. We'll be back with the top of the second. Top of the second. Sam Tomasello leading off against Brendan Kelly. Kelly gave up a single and a walk in the first inning. There's a ground ball to third. Ryan Kester picks it up, throws over to Alex Barker hook for the out. Score that one, five to three. One pitch, one out. David Hayes, the pitcher, gonna step in against Brendan. Throws between anywhere between 84 and 86 miles an hour. He'll get up there as soon as he gets to college. They'll work on him. Fine tune him up, if you will. There's a curveball. Hayes finds himself down. 0-1. Foul tip, 0-2. Oh Brendan's pitched some high pressure games. He pitched against Greater New Bedford Regional Tech in 2017. The ball outside. He left the game with the uh, score tied. The Hillers ultimately lost that semifinal game and there's a line drive right back to the box. Caught by Kelly, will have it around the horn. Two down. Shows good reflexes, just like his dad. Matt Molion, or Molian. If you just turned in, it's the top of the second inning. I don't know why you would just turn in in the top of the second, but He's going to look at a curveball outside, or slider, excuse me. Brendan pitched in last year's playoff game against Duxbury. The Duxbury Green something, we'll call them the Green Hornets, whatever they were. Ball. Left the game. Score was one to one. Hopkins ultimately lost that quarterfinal game. Two one. It's a strike. Two balls and a strike. Oh, the pressure doesn't get to Brendan Kelly. He just had some tough luck and tight games. Ball low. I muffed the count. One free pass. He's had two free passes so far today. And a single. That's about all Norwood has got so far. Scores two to nothing. Hopkinton. Simos and Ambrosoni scored off a base hit by Connor Kelly. Swing and a miss. That was down low. Almost hit the turf. Nice pick by Stevie Simos. Strike two. Oh, Ty Darty's going to have a lot of land to cover out in Ohio there with a Kenyon College. Break a pitch outside. I wonder what kind of food they serve out there. Maybe I can find out between innings. 
There's a line drive in the left field. Through for a hit. Michael Sunkar steps to the plate. Two men on, two out. Top of the second. I'm sorry. I was just informed it's the top of the order. So that'd be Rob Ladkowski. No, re no relation to Rob Gronkowski. Supposed to be funny. Right down Broadway. Bat right on his shoulders. Had no intention of swing at that pitch. Here's the ground ball the first base. Picked up by Alex Barker Hook. Runs over, tags the bag. Retires the side. So at the end of one and a half, it's Hopkin and two. Norwood, nothing. Bottom of the second, Ronnie Sheamus. Going to step in against Hayes. Ronnie Sheamus having a good year at the plate. He's DHing today. 462 on the year for the sophomore. Coach Simos is going to have some nice players to fill in for the players he loses. Ball outside. This is the last year he's going to have a chance to coach his son. Time f does fly. I remember Stevie as a five-year-old playing with my son who was six and a half. The called strike. Believe it or not, they were small then. But they could play. They were born to play. The fly ball to right field. That's going to be out of play. Brendan Kelly drooling on deck. Like a caged lion over there. After he hit that monstrous shot on Monday night. We weren't broadcasting because Tom Nappy was at the Bruins game of all places. I mean, I can't believe that. There's a fly ball in the right field. Right field coming in on it. He's going to make the catch. Sheamus is retired. The stat book isn't correct, but we'll give you Brendan's average. 364 it shows him having no home runs, but that's impossible. He had a long bomb in the Pajoli tournament against Natick. As I mentioned, he had a, uh, a big fly on Monday night. Takes a ball low. As I mentioned, I have absolutely no stats. Fielding, hitting, base running, nothing from Norwood. Strike called, one and one. Trying to get a score from the girls' softball game. They win over there against Norwood, and they are the TVL large champs. Ball upstairs, two and one. When Tom Nappy wants a score from me, I give it to him immediately. But when I ask for it, he just takes his time. Coach Brent McKenzie down at third base. Done a nice job waving in runners this year. Not too many faux pas. Aggressive base coach. Foul back. Alex Barker Hook on deck. Playing first base today. He's taking over first base when Brendan Kelly pitches. Deference goes to seniors. That's what Co Coach Simos likes to do. That's a ball. Brandon Kelly's going to take a walk. Oh, one down. Brendan's not a threat to steal unless uh, Coach Simos calls for the delay steal, which he'll do from time to time.
wouldn't want to be the shortstop with Brendy Kelly bearing down on me. He's a big boy, 6'2", 220 pounds. Played tight end in this year for the uh, Hillers. Did some punting, I believe, as well. Alex Parker Hook was a little league phenom, bigger than everybody else. There's a pop up towards the right. It's going to be out of play. Been lucky so far. I haven't heard any crack windshields. And my car is in Windshield Alley over there, so I may have jinxed myself. One and one to Alex Parker Hook. One down, Kelly on first base. There's a ground ball that's up towards the middle. That's flipped to the short, second baseman. Throw to first. Not in time. So Ledkowski to Dennehy to Tomasello. Almost had the double play. Cole Glassburn, Monday night's all-star, all-time all-star. Pitched a three-hitter. Three hit shutout against Medfield. And there's a foul ball over towards us, but that's going to hit the batting cage. Ball out of play. Cole had no comment when I went over for a quote. Normally he has a lot to say, but today it was nothing. No, that's not true. He said, good game I pitched the other night. I said, that's right, you did. It was the best game I've seen in, in three years. I'm sorry. He tooted his own horn. He's going to Catholic University. There's a pop-up on the left side of the infield. The shortstop is under it. Makes a catch. So at the end of two and a half, two to nothing, Hopkinen. The top of the third we go. I had a gaff ending last inning. It's not at two and a half innings. It uh, was at the end of two. Oh, top three, Jay Ledkowski is leading off, followed by Jason Dennehy and Mark Murphy. So far, Brendan Kelly has allowed two free passes and two base hits. But otherwise, they're shutting all went down. Ground foul. Almost a nice play by the on-deck hitter, Dennehy. Quite a contrast between Cole Glassburn and Brendan Kelly in terms of uh, their deliberation when they go to the plate. Ball low. Cole takes about anywhere from eight to nine seconds to deliver a pitch and Brendan, maybe uh, 12, 13 seconds. The ground ball up the first base line. Picked up by Alex Parker Hook. Throws to Kelly. Covered the bag, and he's safe. Ledkowski beat it out. Ball was there in time. Just a muff by Alex Parker Hook. Was going to score that in E3. See if Norwood tries to get the run game going here. The number three hitter. They usually have pretty good back control. No signs of Lightkowski taking off. Pitch was low. Score at uh, softball field is 0-0. Bottom of the second inning. Here's some yelling and screaming over there. There's a ground ball to second base. Flipped to second for one on the first, not in time. Well, Glassburn's able to cut down the lead runner. Mark Murphy steps in. The number four hitter, number four hitter. Cleanup guy. Be nice to see the boys and the girls walk off with TVL large titles. There's a strike. Tried to check. Went around. No appeal to the base up. 
Home plate ump called that one. Is strike two. Beautiful pitch. Maybe you can pick up in the camera the screaming and yelling over at the softball field. Something's going on over there. It's not a roller coaster ride. Ball's outside. Stevie Simon was popped up. Third base coach relaying his signs into Murphy. Runners taken off. Foul ball. Counts one and two. Will they send Danahy? Will Coach Simos have Brendan Kelly pick over there? No, he goes to the plate. Ball's up high. Coach Simos calls all the pitches, calls the pickoff plays. Total control. Runner taking off. And there's a line drive into center field. Ambrosino, Ambrosoni going after it. Makes a great catch on the run. Throws to first. Not in time. That's sort of a left-handed Jackie Bradley Jr. type play. He had to go a long way for that ball. Brendan Kelly appreciates it. There's two down. You folks won't mind at home if I have a lifesaver, I'm sure. I'll be very quiet, I promise. James Whalen stepping in. The strike. Some pie has a liberal window. I'll call him too tight. Monday night's umpire, same way. There's a strike, swinging. Sometimes you get an umpire that's just really, really tight. You can frustrate a pitcher. They think they're calling a college game or a pro game. Runners taking off, and there's a ground ball. Over to Kelly, Kelly picks it up, throws to first, get him. So at the end of two and a half now, the score is two nothing, Hopkinton on H cam. Bottom three, Ben McKenzie, Stevie Simos, and Tommy Ambrosoni, who made that tremendous play out in center field just a moment ago. Ben McKenzie flew out his last time up. Ball low. He's been going after first pitches more than I've seen him in his last two years. Now we've seen him. Hayes not particularly overpowering. Doesn't have near the velocity that Brendan Kelly does. Ball low, two and one. With all the rainouts, a lot of these teams are trying to manage their uh, pitching. I don't think that Hayes would be their number one guy. There's a high foul ball. Counts two and two. There's a line drive. That's going to get down in the left field. Picked up by the left fielder. Gets the cutoff man at short. One on, no out. Let's see if Coach Simo sends Ben or he's going to try and protect Stevie at the plate. 
See if he's got raw power. He shows bunt, pulls it back. Nothing doing. According to the stats I have, Ben only has seven steals, but I'm sure he's got more than that. Ball outside. And according to the stats I have, uh, Stevie has three home runs on the year. I think that's right, though. There's a swing and a miss. Stevie has more than warning pet track power. Throw down to first base. Bend back easily. Score from the girls' softball game at 6 0. Hopkinton. Top three, and there's a line drive in the right field, and that's going to. Be a foul ball. It's close to the chalk line. See if he really turned on that pitch. Umpire says play. Hayes delivers. There's a strike. You retire Stevie Simos. It was one out, bottom of the third inning, Tom Ambrosoni. I haven't botched his name too bad last three or four games. Bunt pulled back. There goes Ben. Throw down to second base, and he is safe. Definitive call from the second base umpire. Ben McKenzie finds himself in scoring position. With Tommy Ambrosoni up. The fly ball in the right field. Ben going back to tag, and he's going to tag. The throw to third base is high, and he does get him. Nice throw from the right fielder. Ladowski to retire Ben McKenzie. HKM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fourth inning, 2 nothing Hopkinton. TVL Championship Large is on the line here for the Hillers. Noah needs a win to stay in the hunt for a playoff spot. Sam Tomasello is going to step in against Brendan Kelly. Throw to ball outside. Pretty close. Looks good from here. I'm Larry Sackler. We got John Ritz on camera today. There's a fly ball in the right field. That may drop in there, and it does. The third hit off Brendan Kelly. The leadoff hitter is aboard. Your pitcher, David Hayes. Who's kept Hopkinton relatively quiet? Will they go small ball and bunt? Yes, they do. There's a bunt. Stevie Simons gets it, throws to first, and throws it in the right field. Ball's being backed up by Connor Kelly, gets it in. Have to score that an error on Stevie Simos. Got to appreciate Noah Wood's aggressiveness. They're down two runs. Now they have runners at second and third with nobody out.
with Matt Malian, the eight, number eight hitter. Well, no, it's making some hay with the bottom of their order. And break a pitch in there for a called strike. Hiller Sports is supported by viewers like you and Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street in downtown Hopkinton. You can find them at mybillspizza.com. Pitch just inside, 101. Hiller's up 2 nothing. Top four. Both pitchers have been rather, relatively economical, not particularly high pitch counts. It's a strike. No, it's not a strike. That's a hit batsman. I got blocked out. Bases of juice now. Coach Simo is going to take a little trip to the mound, have a conversation with Brendan. He'll bring his son along for the ride. Tom Nappy's going to come over after the softball game is over, and it doesn't matter to you folks now who are watching, but we'll broadcast the senior night festivities live on Facebook. You can check that out on YouTube. YouTube.com slash HCAM TV. Ball up high. Norwood and Hopkinen were in a 3-3 battle for the longest time last Friday night until Nick Paharic broke it up with a two-run single. There's a ground ball to shortstop over to second for one. On the first, that's a double play. Run scores, 6-4-3. Nice turn by Cole Glassburn. That double play helps Brendan's cause. Lead cut in half, though. Tying runner on third base. Tying run, excuse me, at third base. Brendan's going to pitch out of the stretch. There's a breaking pitch in there for a strike. Stevie Simos calls time. Maybe there was a little... Miscommunication on the pitch call. In the Natick game at Petroli tournament, Alex Barker Hook was on the mound. It was a runner on second base. Hook pulled an inside move and had the runner at second dead to rights. Sent the ball in the center field. Coach Simos was absolutely beside himself. If that throw was there, that kid would have been out by a mile and looked very foolish heading back to the dugout. Coach Simos likes to take some risks, that's for sure. Ground ball foul. So it is a little bittersweet to see these kids go off playing their last regular season game in their hometown. They've represented their school incredibly well. They've represented their community incredibly well. They've made their parents proud and certainly foul ball back. Certainly they can say they've made themselves proud. They put a lot of work in from T-ball on up. They've been a lot of fun to watch over these years. I've really enjoyed it. There's a ground ball to third. Kester picks it up, throws over the hook, and he gets him. 
just by hair on your chinny chin chin. Ryan Kester throws out the runner at first base. We're heading to the bottom of the fourth inning on H Cam. Leading off the bottom of the fourth inning, Drew Rankatori stepping in against Hayes. Ball outside. Drew Rankatori has played an excellent left field this year. Called strike. He's going to be playing for post 77 in Ashland this summer, along with Cole Glassburn and maybe some others. Another called strike. It's down 0 2. He's one of the leading base stealers on this team, Drew Rankatori. That's something I didn't think I'd see. Got some good hitters behind him. Connor Kelly on deck. It's a breaking pitch, and that's a ground ball up the first baseline. Hayes over to cover, and he's safe. Speed kills. Rankatori was just sneaking up that line. Good hustle. I thought Hayes would be there in plenty of time. Thomas, Tomasello could have taken that himself, I think. I know what he was thinking. Connor Kelly had two RBI single. Pick over. Drew Rankatori back easily. No, Hayes has got to work himself out of a little jam. Lead off man on. Pretty close. Back pick. Not close. Maligan tried to catch Rankatori leaning towards second base. Not even close, though. Six to three at the girls' game. The foul ball out of play. It's heading to the bottom of the third over at the softball turf field, which I really don't like. They haven't used the... Uh, Grass field, even one time this year. Terrible waste. Ball in the dirt. Rankatori's going to scamper down to second base. And Connor Kelly finds himself in another RBI situation. I like that number three. Might be his lucky number today. Good looking hitter. There's a ground ball to second. Rankatori heads to third. Connor Kelly is out. Advances the runner. Score that four to three. Ronnie Sheamus showing some toughness. He was on crutches the other day. Because of that collision last Saturday at Mahan Field in Natick. Good looking catcher. Curveball, strike. There's a ground ball off the pitcher over to the shortstop, picks it up, throws him out. Rankatori stayed where he was. Score that one, six, three. Pitcher to shortstop to first. Umpire asking the pitcher whether he's okay. He's going to be fine, but he's got to face Brendan Kelly, who's hitting 364, or was coming into the game, according to Max Prep, Max Prep stats. Outfield playing deep for Brendan. Maybe they got the scouting report, or maybe they've watched these YouTube games. Ball's upstairs. That's what the Medfield softball team did, is they watched our broadcast, and they altered their defensive alignment accordingly. A little sneaky on the Medfield Warriors' part. Ground foul. Medfield. 
Medfield girls lost to the Hopkins and Hillers their first go round, and they came into town and rolled on the Hiller girls team last week. Ball outside, Brendan. First base is open. Noah, we've got to decide whether to play this one safe. Brendan's dangerous. And there's a foul ball over our head, out of play. Hayes is keeping Norwood in the game. Again, he doesn't have a lot of gas with his pitches. He's a get it and throw it type. There's a line drive in the right field. That's going to score Drew Rancatori. It's bobbled by the right fielder, but no advance by Brendan Kelly. So the Kelly boys have got all the RBIs today. It's nice when the Italian kids show up and hit the ball. Sorry, Alex, I don't have any uh, batting average for you. I'll have to take that up with the... Uh, the official scorer in the dugout. There's a swing and a miss. I'll just say you're hitting 500. How's that, kid? Brendan Kelly getting a two-step lead over there, not greedy at all. Strike two. I'm relaying scores over to Tom Knapp, and he's telling me he can see the scoreboard from where he is, so a heck with him. There's a line drive. Second base, picks it up, throws to first. And that retires the side. So at the end of four, it's 3 1, uh, Hopkins and Hillers on H cam. To the top of the fifth inning, you saw a terrific play last half inning. Ryan Kester got a ball down the line, snagged it and threw over to Alex Barker Hook to retire Norwood. We have Jay Ladkowski. The left-hander going to face Brendan Kelly, followed by Jason Dennehy and Mark Murphy. Bobby McGuire and uh, Ty Doherty down in the bullpen. There's a ground ball. In the right field for a base hit in between Glassburn and Alex Barco Hook. No chance for either of them. Number three hitter, Dennehy. But just like last inning, Norwood's got uh, somebody in the leadoff spot on base. Brendan had to work out of a jam last inning. Got a nice double play turned for him. Gave up the run, but... Uh, Pick over, not close. And Brendan Kelly got that run back by himself with a base hit to right field, scoring Rancatori. There the runner goes, no throw by Stevie Simos. Bruins lost last night in overtime 3-2. That was kind of a bummer. For those of you who didn't see the game and have it on your DVR, I just ruined it for you, but oh well. There's a strike called. It was a single and a stolen base for Norwood to lead off the inning. Well, Brendan wanted that pitch. Brendan hasn't thrown many back-to-back -back breaking pitches. Coach Simos likes to back up a breaking pitch with another breaking pitch, and sometimes three in a row if the pitcher's feeling it and there's a ball that gets away from the bullpen. There's a fly ball in the right field. Connor Kelly coming in on it. Runner is not going to tag. Throw in to Ben McKenzie. Nice to see Brendan Kelly. Fielding his position over there, backing up third base. Ty Doherty was just telling me that Kenyon College is uh, 
right next to a cornfield, those thousand acres. You'll have to send us some pictures next year. We'll post them. It's a liberal arts school, I understand. We know Rob Lee Pagliuca will be eating well next year. He'll be at UMass Amherst. There's a Minuteman. they got a great dining hall. And as I mentioned earlier on in the year, Stevie Simos and Ben McKenzie will be chowing down up at Bowdoin. It's a strike. Bowdoin's got the number one ranked dining hall. And Friday nights is lobster casserole, corn on the cob, and some blueberry pastry. Well, that sounds good right about now. Brendan taking his time. He throws a curveball. That's a strike. Drop by Stevie. Steve and Ben are not rooming together, but I'm sure they'll be dining together fairly often. Coach Simo's other son, Timmy, is in the Army playing for the, uh, the Black Knights. They're in the NCAA tournament. Through the number one, just fouled off. The starting second baseman for Army, hitting 250. Fielding percentage is 982, which is one of the best fielding percentages in the country. Coach Simos got to be really proud of both of his boys. There's a swing and a miss. Strike three. At least he wasn't looking. Didn't leave his shoes in the batter's box. Coach Simos, of course, was a four-year player at Boston College. Did some high school coaching. Then he went over to Holy Cross and did some coaching over there and came back, coached some more baseball, then coached some softball, then went over to Millis, coached baseball, then came back here. I think that's how it went. There's a strike. Here, the pop of the mitt. Despite a couple of walks, Brendan has not thrown a lot of pitches. There's a curveball in there for a strike. It's a beauty. Now, if I'm a mind reader, he saw a really good breaking pitch, Coach Simos. He might just back that up with another. Brendan staring in. Takes a look at the runner at second base. There's a breaking pitch outside for a ball. Nice block by Bobby McGuire. Umpire calls time. Things are getting a little tight over the girls' softball game at 6-5 to five in the fourth inning. They've had a pitching change over there. But they're broadcasting live, so you might know that already. It's a foul ball heading towards the parking lot. John, how do those foul balls keep missing cars? I, I want to know that. No. You're that type of guy. You only care about your car. Oh, my. Could be a long ride home for Norwood, win or lose. A lot of traffic. Umpire says two and two. Runner at second base. Brendan stares in for the sign. Goes home. Runner steals. That's strike three. The count was three and two. We'll be right back with you on H Cam. David Hayes is going to face Cole Glassburn in the top of the lineup. The bottom of the fifth inning. Connor Kelly taking a walk down towards the bullpen. He's been the closer all year. And there's a fly ball deep right field. Is that going to get down? It does. And Glassburn's going to hit first, heading to second base. And he's going to be held up. 
Barney Rubble with a double. Slowest runner on the Hopkins and Hillers. And he'll admit that. He's slow as beans. Will they pinch run for him? Lead off double by Cole Glasper, and he's got that type of power. He's either going to whiff or he's going to stroke one. Nothing, no middle with Cole Glasper and Ben McKenzie. Plenty of pop, and he's going to take a strike. Ball in the dirt, or ball in the turf. One and one. Three to one Hopkinton in the fifth inning. TVL title large at stake. Ball high, 21. Hayes, again, doesn't, hasn't really shown a breaking pitch that I've been able to pick up. There's a fly ball down the left field line, and it's going to be caught by the left fielder. Murphy. Didn't have to move much for that. Stevie Simo's going to step in. Ben squared that ball up nice. Stevie Simos will do just about anything. He'll bunt when you least expect it. Got home run power, too. Ball high. And that's the mind game. Stevie Simo's mind game. He's got that clock in his head. He feels out the pitcher and just call time. Make the pitcher go through his motion again. Ball low. Noah doesn't know it now, but there's no threat to steal at second base. It's got to get to the backstop in order for Cole to make it to third. There's a fly ball in the right field. They're going to hold glass burn at third base. <laughs> For sure. He looks so athletic, but he's so damn slow. If you want to read an interesting article, Google Jack Whaley, W-E-H-L-E, -E, Florida, golf. There's an article about him and a Pennsylvanian kid who got to uh, Naples, Florida this fall. Made the golf team. This kid, Barker. It's a strike. So this kid, Barker, sort of strolls up the fairway without a care in the world. And Whaley, typical Jack Whaley, he hits a ball and he's stomping down the fairway, chasing his ball. All fiery, I think they use that word. Fiery, so he plays golf like he plays baseball. And his mom's not getting sunburned. She's using a lot of sunscreen down there. And there's a strike. Tommy Ambersoni's hitting over 400 this year. And there's a ground ball. It's gonna two, no. Run scores. Shortstop tried to take it himself. Threw the ball up the first base, home plate side. And didn't get the speedy Ambersoni. Someone once said, speed kills. That's an RBI for Tommy Ambersoni. Now here's Drew Rancatori. And Ambersoni's going, and he is out. Didn't get a good jump at all. 
So at the end of five, the score is 4-1 the Hopkinton on HCAM. Top six, Hopkins and up, 4-1. Ty Doherty in the bullpen, Bobby McGuire. Brendan Kelly's given up five hits so far. It's a really tight game over at the softball field. Sam Tomasello facing Brendan Kelly. He had a hit last time. He fouls that one straight back. You're a catcher, right, McGuire? We'll catch the ball, all right? Brendan's had some defensive help today. Double play. There's a pop-up. Cole Glassburn calls it, squeezes it, one out. Two pitches, one out. That's efficient. Pitcher David Hayes is going to step in and face Brendan, his opposite number. Be only fair if he got an RBI somehow, since Brendan got one off him, but he'd have to tag one. Brendan really reared back with that pitch. It was upstairs. It is a strike. John, you picking up those balls and strikes like you're supposed to? Sure. The camera tell you that was a strike? Just missed outside. It's six to six. Norwood and Hopkinton. TBL large title at stake for the girls. The ball just a little outside. Charlotte can. Came in to relieve Juliana Cedia. There's a break of pitch that hits Hayes. Usually you hear the dugouts screaming and yelling, wear it, rare it. Not much chirping in the Norwood dugout yet. Got a play to run, maybe they'll get a little excited. Matt Malian. The big catcher, number 34. Good size, built like a catcher. There's a ground ball to first base. Brendan Kelly covering first base. Gets the throw from Barker Hook. That's more like it. Score that one, three to one. They had a little boo-boo earlier in the game where Barker Hook muffed the ground ball to first base. Brendan was over there in time and couldn't flip it to Brendan before the runner crossed first base, so. Matt Sunkar. There's a ground ball, left-hand side, and under the glove of Ben McKenzie. Got to score that one. Uh, E6, run scores. Excuse me. Runner gets the third. No run scores. A little trouble for Brennan Kelly. Just missed. Two down, four to one. 
Hopkins and over Norwood. The Norwood Mustangs rode into town with the yellow school bus. Well, hopefully they'll be riding out of town. There's a breaking pitch. Two balls, no strikes. I wonder if Norwood's going to send their runner. Could run into a third out. Break a pitch for a strike. Hasn't been throwing many back-to-back -back breakers today. Maybe he doesn't have the feel for it. But his fastball has been lively today. Here's a break a pitch. Just missed. Coach Simos sending out signals to the outfield, making sure there's no doubles. Outfield playing deep. That ball's hit out to center field. Tommy Ambersoni out, and that ball's gone. A three-run homer. Now Norwood's alive. That ball was tagged. I thought Tommy Ambersoni was going to get to that ball, but that carried and carried. Coach Simos is going to go out and talk to Brendan. I think he'll let him ride with the bases clear. That's what he's exactly what he's going to do. We got ties on both fields. Lead off hitter, Ladkowski up. There's a line drive down the right field line foul. Rob Litkowski. Fastball outside. Brendan bounced that one over to Stevie. One bad pitch by Brendan Kelly in this game is now tied been pitching really good game up until then there's a pop up down the left field line out goes Kester and they almost trip over the Fake pitching mound over there. Nice try by Kester. Want to make sure Brendan's not overthrowing the ball, trying to get his anger out of the way on that last pitch. Settle down. You get two more shots to get back in this game. Going ahead. Got deuces all around. Curveball, foul back. Brendan's a warrior, though. He's going to bear down. There's a line drive off uh, back of hook. To Glassburn to Kelly. 3 4 1 score that one. That was a, a ricochet job. So at the end, or at six, five and a half innings, it's 4 4 on H cam. Bottom of six, 4 4 tie, Norwood and Hopkinton. Drew Rankatori stepping in against David Hayes. Who's still in there? 
Foul ball over our way. It's going to be out of play. No worries. Drew Rancatori had a stolen base last time. He was on base. It's a ground ball. Made a nice play by the first baseman, Tomaselli. Runs to the bag to get Drew Rancatori. One down. Connor Kelly going to step in, try his luck with Hayes. Nice, nice play by Sammy, Sammy Tomasello. Snagging that ball going down the line. Just strike to Kelly. Ronnie Sheamus on deck. The fly ball in the right field it may drop, and it does. Second and hit of the game for Connor Kelly. I'm not sure what kind of speed Kelly has. If he takes off, Coach Simos is pretty convinced he'll be able to make it. Catcher Malian threw out a runner. Before, it's a hit batsman. HBP. Sheamus will shake that one off, and Brendan Kelly stepping in here. He wants some revenge. Hope he works this pitcher and doesn't go after the first pitch. Well, he wouldn't go after that anyway. Way upstairs. Maybe Hayes thinks he really has to bear down a little bit harder to get his opposite number. Ball high, 2-0. No warm-up activity for Norwood. Or if there was, it was out of my sight line. A sprinkling of fans that came in from Norwood, mostly Hopkins and fans. There's a swing foul back. That was a rip. Robbie Pagliuca on deck. Pags, my favorite player. Count is two and one to Brendan Kelly. There's a base hit in the right field. Here comes Kelly turning. And he's going to stay at third base. Not much speed. Robbie Pagliuca has been uh, pretty clutch this year. And that's why he's been voted my favorite player. He's always in there for clutch something or other. Sack, fly, base hit, lay down a bunt, he'll do anything. He's a real team player, his kid. He might make my all-time, all-timers team. Top 10 kids you'll never forget. Kevin Igo makes a trip to the mound. Talk with Hayes. I'll be Coach Simos told Pags to be patient. Wait for his pitch. Don't swing at anything that's not between this spot and that spot. Just strike inside corner. He sort of short arms the ball up there. He doesn't have a big long delivery. There's a ground ball base hit in the left field for Pagliuca. And that scores a run to break the tie. Robbie Pagliuca, my favorite player, comes through with a base hit. It's 5 4 Hopkinton. Coach Simos has been known to put the suicide squeeze on. 
from time to time. He did it last year with Tommy Ambersoni with the bases loaded to win the game. And there it is. And there's a suicide squeeze, and he throws the first base. He doesn't. He gets him, but the run scores. That Coach Simos is a crafty guy. Throws the suicide squeeze on. Perfectly executed by Cole Glassburn, who might be one of the three stars of the game. Ben McKenzie up with two down and a 6-4 game, and that ball is popped up very high. Catcher McLean going over, and he doesn't get it. Three guys calling for it. Nobody gets it. Got to believe you're going to see Connor Kelly come out of the bullpen and try and finish this game off. If history is the judge. There's a pop-up. Second baseman shortstop calls for it. Retires the side. So the score is six to four. And we will be back in just a moment for the top of the seventh. Connor Kelly into the game for the top of the seventh. Norwood's last chance, six to four on that last play where Cole Glassburn laid down a bunt. I thought out of the corner of my eye, I saw Ronnie Seamus running down the line. So we'll have to wait for uh, our crack editing crew to see whether that was a plain sacrifice or a suicide squeeze. In any event, scored a run. Great call by Coach Simos. Is the good looking sophomore, the great breaking ball. Pretty slick. I'm gonna enjoy watching him next year. Number three, four, and five. And there's a strike right down Broadway. Dennehy, Murphy, and Whalen. Whalen, the DH today. There's a pop-up into the infield. Ben McKenzie calling for it. Squeezes it, one out. Norwood's down to their last two. Connor Kelly's motion is so easy. It's not herky-jerky. Pours that strike in there. Norwood's putting a beating on the Hillers over at the softball field, 11 to five. And it's a ball in the dirt or in the turf. I'm not a big fan of this turf field. We got a nice broadcast perch up at field two we could have used. There's a ball outside, two and one. Just not a big fan of turf. Like a broken record. There's strike two. On the inside corner. Murphy didn't like it. The ump has the final say. Connie bounced that one up. Blocked by Stevie. You don't want to give no in any life whatsoever. Ground foul. Foul back behind the plate. There's a ground ball over to McKenzie, picks it up, throws to first for the second out of the inning. And Hopkinton is one out away from a TVL large crown. Second year in a row. So the game on Saturday at 5 p.m. will be against Dover Sherborne. And there's a pop-up. That'll be out of play.
Norwood really needed to have this game. Ten wins and you're in the playoffs. I believe they have nine. Ball low. Norwood down to their last out. Wayland cannot hit a two-run homer here. Ball upstairs. Very quiet in the Norwood dugout. No chirping, no razzing, nothing. Wayland calls time. Ball inside. I believe that's three and one. Maybe off by a pitch. Don't have a clicker. Is the ball hit into right field and that's gonna drop for a base hit. Well now it's a little life. Sam Tomasello stepping in who made that very good defensive play in the last inning down to first base. You got a pinch runner, I don't know who it is. They don't have numbers if you don't insert information into the system. We'll just say it's a pinch runner. We've seen one breaking pitch so far from Connor Kelly. That's his out pitch. Alex Barker Hook playing behind the runner. So they may be conceding the base. The ball low. Stevie Samuel's got a little gun there behind the plate. There's a pop-up. It's called off by Stevie Simos, and he squeezes it, makes the grab, and that is the ball game. So Hopkins did what they had to do. They win the TVL large title, six to four against the Norwood Mustangs. Great regular season. Still have a Dover game against Dover, Sherborne and Norton. But now they're in and they can't be caught. So we certainly appreciate the support from our viewers and Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street, downtown Hopkinton. You can visit them, of course, at mybillspizza.com. For John and Rich, this is Larry Sacklad. At the end of seven, six to four, Hopkinton. So, my answer to um, when do you want senior day to be is typically I don't want senior day. Um, so that's just a curmudgeon in me, but um, every day is senior day. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, that was a load of crap. But uh, <laughs> listen, this is really about uh, our senior day is going to be the banquet. Our senior day, we have more. Uh, we didn't play this as a senior day. We played this as a, an opportunity. But um, what I'm happy for from the seniors is those seniors will always have their year up in the, in the um, athletic center as the TVL champ by themselves. Obviously now, in, in, in addition, uh, Luke Deloyo is not here, but um, um, but that's really a special accomplishment, especially this year. I've been coaching, um, this is my 14th year here, and um, I've been here a very, very long time. This is as good as the league has been. So to win this league um, and keep on battling the way they did and come back today where we didn't really play our best, really... Um, really special thing and, and the seniors had a, such a huge role in it. So what we would like to do is just thank um, 
uh, their parents for your support of us. Again, I'll, we'll talk a lot about it at the banquet, but my whole thing is, uh, as we say when we met in my classroom, um, thank you for faking it. Um, whenever you're not happy, you fake it in the best interest of other people. That's what life is all about. Um, fake it till you make it. And I understand um, the, the, the give and take of keeping, look, this is, a, this is like a football roster. Um, it's very difficult. This is a very unique group of kids that can, that can hold together. The love they show for each other is amazing. With, with 21, 22 kids, and guys coming up, taking spots, and then just doing all the little things that you, I hope you notice, um, that will be will be special and honored. And it's the important stuff moving down the road. Tremendous young men you've raised. So, um, John Zach feels as though he has no consequential role, uh, so we're gonna let him read. <laughs> That uh, mound is all me today. Yeah. That mound is all me today. And, uh, it's all about so, me. But he, and he knows how to, he went to the University of Notre Dame, so he's good at reading. <laughs> uh, um, he's going to call up the parents and we'll take a nice picture of the seniors and their significant parents. I don't know who's here, um, but. We're going to go in uh, Jersey order. So Ty, Ty Doherty and his parents, uh, Kendra and Ken. This face here. Let's get all the. We'll get the photographs over here. Go right behind the scenes. Stand right there. And you're can right I, in front of the oh. camera. So just either go left or right. That's easy. I got you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Cole Glassburn and his parents, Michelle and John. Cole had a double and a squeeze. All right. At least this way. Perfect. <laughs> Ryan Kester and his parents, okay. Sheila and Mike. Bobby was born in 1937. <laughs> <laughs> John Yusuf and his mom, Nadia. Captain Steven Simos and his mom Cheryl.
Who's today's festivities? Uh, <laughs> no, we have all parents and and, and, uh, and seniors. Oh, yeah. and we got a, we got a, a nice good shot.